Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another session of MGT 4520 International Entrepreneurship. And today we are looking at global human resource management. The objectives for today are to discuss the importance of motivating employees and the methods to accomplish this across cultures. We're also going to illustrate the importance of hiring global minded employees for the success of a venture and training these employees to succeed. We would like to, and hopefully, discuss the leadership necessary to inspire and recruit personnel, as well as understand the critical role of a proper human resource management in a successful global enterprise. Identify the major sources of potential employees and how to access them rounds off our objectives for today's session. Understanding motivations across cultures is crucial for effective global human resource management. Motivational factors vary significantly from one culture to another, impacting how individuals perceive and pursue their goals within organizations. Let's discuss these bullet points a little bit further. Intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. Now, intrinsic motivation refers to internal drives and desires that lead individuals to engage in activities for the inherent satisfaction they provide. This could include a sense of achievement, personal growth, or enjoyment of the task itself. And extrinsic motivations involves external factors such as rewards, recognition, or tangible benefits like money or status. These external incentives are often used to encourage certain behaviors or outcomes. Cultural differences can influence the relative importance of intrinsic and extrinsic motivations. For example, in individualistic cultures like the United States, intrinsic motivations such as autonomy and personal fulfillment may be highly valued. Whereas in collectivist cultures like Japan, extrinsic motivators such as social recognition and group harmony might be more significant. Looking at needs, drives, and goal attainment, needs suggest basic physiological needs to higher order needs like self-actualization. Whereas cultural values and norms can shape the prioritization of these needs. For instance, cultures emphasizing individual achievement may prioritize self-actualization, while those valuing communal harmony may prioritize belongingness and social connections. Content needs are significantly influenced by local culture. And what this means is the specific content of motivational needs can be significantly influenced by local cultures. For example, in cultures with a strong emphasis on family and community, individuals may be more motivated by social recognition and relationships. In cultures with a focus on achievement and success, individuals may prioritize career advancement and status symbols. Looking at effective culture changes over time, Cultural values and norms are not static. They evolve over time because of various factors such as globalization, technological advancements, and societal changes. Now, these changes can impact motivational factors by altering societal expectations, norms around work-life balance, and perceptions of success. For example, as societies become more interconnected, younger generations may prioritize work flexibility and personal fulfillment over traditional markers of success like job stability. Lastly, culture affects the view on quality of life. Culture shapes individuals' perceptions of what constitutes a good quality of life, which in turn influences their motivations and career choices. For example, in cultures with a strong emphasis on work-life balance, individuals may prioritize leisure time and family relationships over career advancement. Alternatively, in cultures that value material wealth and status, individuals may be more motivated to pursue high-paying careers and prestigious positions. Bringing this all together, understanding cultural differences in motivations is essential for global human resource management to effectively engage and motivate employees from diverse cultural backgrounds. By recognizing the influence of culture on intrinsic and extrinsic motivators, addressing the specific content needs shaped by local culture, and adapting to cultural changes over time. Organizations can create inclusive and supportive work environments that foster employee engagement and success. 
Human capital refers to the skills, knowledge, and abilities and experience possessed by individuals within an organization. These human resources are crucial for the success and growth of ventures, particularly in the context of startups and global expansions. Here's a detailed discussion on the sources and types of human capital, including various categories of personnel involved. Let's first look at startup stage and outside expertise. In the early stages of a venture, especially startups, outside expertise is often hired to fill skill gaps and provide specialized knowledge. Startups may lack the resources or infrastructure to develop certain capabilities in-house, making it necessary to bring in external talent. Outside experts can include consultants, advisors, or contractors who offer expertise in areas such as product development, marketing, finance, or technology. Now looking at personnel in international operations, as the venture expands globally, it typically starts to develop its own personnel in international operations to support growth and sustainability. This involves building a diverse workforce with the necessary skills and cultural competencies to operate effectively in different regions. Now, various categories of personnel involved in international operations include some of these different components, home country nationals, host country nationals, third country nationals, and lastly, impatriates. Now, home country nationals, also known as expatriates, so expatriates, are individuals from the home country of the venture who are assigned to work in foreign subsidiaries or offices. They bring valuable knowledge of the company's culture, policies, and practices, which can help maintain consistency and alignment across international operations. Now, the second point, host country nationals are local individuals hired by the company in foreign locations. They possess local market knowledge, language proficiency, and cultural insights, which make them valuable assets for navigating the local business environment because they are from the host country. Now, third country nationals are individuals from a country that is neither the home country nor the host country. They may be hired for their specialized skills, expertise, or familiarity with specific markets or regions. Employing third country nationals can help bridge cultural gaps and facilitate global mobility within the organization. Now, inpatriates are individuals from the host country or third country who are assigned to work in the home country. They bring external perspectives, diversity of thought and cross-cultural experiences to the headquarters or domestic operations of the company. Inpatriation programs can promote knowledge transfer, cultural exchange, and talent development within the organization. So looking at this as a whole in terms of human capital, human capital is sourced from various channels, including outside expertise in the startup stage and personnel hired in international operations. By leveraging a diverse workforce comprising home country nationals, host country nationals, third country nationals, as well as inpatriates, ventures can build the capabilities and competencies needed to succeed in the global marketplace. Effective management and integration of these diverse human resources are essential for achieving sustainable growth and competitive advantage in today's interconnected world. Selecting personnel for international assignments involves careful consideration of various criteria to ensure individuals are well suited for the challenges and opportunities of overseas work. Here's a detailed discussion on the key points on this slide. So technical knowledge and skills relevant to the job role are essential selection criteria. This includes expertise in specific industries, functional areas, or job functions. Candidates should possess the necessary qualifications, certifications, and proficiency in relevant tools or technologies required to perform efficiently and effectively in their roles abroad. Assessments of technical competence may involve interviews, tests, or evaluations of past work experiences. Now, the second point, experience. 
involves previous international experience or exposure to diverse cultures can be valuable criteria for selection. Candidates with a track record of successful international assignments or cross-cultural collaboration may demonstrate greater adaptability and effectiveness in global roles. Experience working in multicultural teams, managing international projects, or navigating complex global markets can be indicative of a candidate's readiness for overseas assignments. The third topic, knowledge of the area culture and language, involves familiarity with the host country's culture, language, and business practices, which are critical for effective integration and communication. Candidates who possess language proficiency or cultural awareness relevant to the destination country may experience smoother transitions and be better equipped to build relationships and navigate cultural nuances. Language skills can be assessed through language proficiency tests, while cultural awareness may be evaluated through interviews or situational assessments. The fourth topic, enjoying and appreciating overseas work and specific cultures, again, stem from genuine interest, enthusiasm, and appreciation for overseas work and the specific culture of the destination country are important selection criteria. Candidates who demonstrate curiosity, open-mindedness, and a willingness to embrace cultural differences are more likely to thrive in international environments. Assessments of cultural fit and alignment with organizational values and goals can help identify candidates who are genuinely passionate about global opportunities. The fifth point, adaptability of the family, the adaptability and support of the candidate's family can significantly impact their success and satisfaction with an international assignment. Considerations may include the willingness of family members to relocate, adapt to new environments, and integrate into the local community. Employers may offer support services, resources, or incentives to facilitate family adjustment and well being during the assignment. Now, demographics. Demographic factors such as age, education, sex, and health can influence suitability for international assignments. Younger candidates may possess greater flexibility and willingness to explore international opportunities, while older candidates may offer maturity and experience. The educational background, including degrees, certifications, and specialized training, can provide insights into a candidate's qualifications and potential for growth. Considerations regarding sex and health may involve assessing the candidate's ability to meet the physical and emotional demands of overseas work and access to necessary healthcare resources. So looking at this as a whole, selecting personnel for international assignments requires a comprehensive evaluation of technical competencies, relevant experience, cultural adaptability, personal motivations, family considerations, and demographic factors. By carefully assessing these criteria, organizations can identify individuals who are well-equipped to thrive in global roles and contribute to the success of international ventures. Effective selection processes help mitigate risks, enhance employee engagement, and drive positive outcomes for both individuals and organizations in the global marketplace. Developing a global mindset within the context of human resources is essential for organizations operating in today's interconnected world. A global mindset encompasses a broad range of competencies and perspectives that enable individuals to effectively navigate the complexities of international business environments. Here's a detailed discussion on the components of a global mindset, as outlined here on the slide. Intellectual capital refers to the collective knowledge, skills, and expertise within an organization. Cultivating a global mindset involves leveraging intellectual capital to understand and address global challenges, opportunities, and trends. This includes fostering a culture of continuous learning, innovation, and knowledge sharing across borders. The second component, knowledge of the global business and industry, Having a deep understanding of global business dynamics, industry trends, and market forces is essential for strategic decision-making and competitive positioning. 
This involves staying abreast of developments in global markets, emerging technologies, regulatory frameworks, and competitive landscapes. Knowledge of the global political and economic systems is another key important factor. Awareness of geopolitical risks, regulatory environments, trade policies and economic trends is critical for managing international operations. This includes understanding the implications of political stability, currency fluctuations, trade agreements, and global economic shifts on business strategies and operations. The next factor, number four, ability to build and manage global value networks. Building strategic alliances, partnerships, and supply chain networks across borders is essential for accessing new markets, resources, and capabilities. This involves developing relationships with key stakeholders, negotiating agreements, and fostering collaboration to create value for all parties involved. The next factor, ability to build and manage global teams, stems to leading and managing diverse multicultural teams dispersed across different regions require strong interpersonal skills, cultural sensitivity, and effective communication. This includes fostering trust, collaboration, and synergy among team members, regardless of their geographical location or cultural background. The next point, ability to understand and manage the tension between corporate requirements and local needs and challenges. Balancing global standardization with local adaptation is a key challenge in managing international operations. Now, this involves understanding and respecting local customs, regulations, and market preferences while maintaining alignment with corporate objectives and standards. The next point, understanding of other cultures and histories. Cultural competence involves recognizing and respecting cultural differences, norms, values, and communication styles. This includes understanding the historical context, social dynamics, and cultural nuances that shape behavior and attitudes in different parts of the world. The eighth factor, understanding cultural similarities and differences, involves recognizing both the similarities and differences across cultures, which foster empathy, mutual respect, and effective collaboration. This involves identifying common ground, shared values, and universal human experiences while appreciating the diversity of perspectives and practices. Now, the ninth factor here, knowledge of other languages. Proficiency in multiple languages enhances cross-cultural communication, relationship building, and cultural immersion. This facilitates effective interaction with stakeholders, clients, and colleagues from different linguistic backgrounds. The 10th factor, ability to adapt, learn, and cope with complex cross-cultural and global issues, involves developing resilience, flexibility, and adaptability, which is essential for navigating the uncertainties and challenges of global business environments. This involves embracing ambiguity, learning from failures, and continuously refining strategies in response to changing circumstances. Looking at the global mindset in terms of intellectual capital as a whole involves cultivating a global mindset within human resources, which involves developing a holistic understanding of global business dynamics, cultural diversity, and cross-cultural competence. By fostering intellectual capital, promoting cross-cultural understanding, and equipping individuals with the knowledge and skills to navigate global complexities, organizations can build a workforce that is agile, innovative, and capable of driving success in the global marketplace. Now, a global mindset pertaining to psychological capital encompasses a set of psychological resources and attitudes that enable individuals to thrive in diverse, multicultural, and complex global environments. Psychological capital, often referred to as PSYCAP, comprises four key components, self-confidence and self-efficacy, resiliency, optimism, and hope. Within the context of a global mindset, these components are complemented by traits and behaviors that facilitate cross-cultural adaptation, collaboration, and success. 
Here's a detailed discussion on each of the aspects outlined on this slide. Self-confidence and self-efficacy involve believing in one's abilities to successfully navigate challenges and achieve goals. In a global context, individuals with high levels of self-confidence and self-efficacy are more likely to take initiative, seize opportunities, and overcome obstacles in unfamiliar environments. They are comfortable with ambiguity, adaptable to change, and assertive in expressing their ideas and opinions across cultural boundaries. Looking at resiliency, this refers to the ability to bounce back from setbacks, adapt to adversity, and thrive in the face of challenges. Global environments often present unpredictable circumstances, cultural misunderstandings, and cross-cultural conflicts. Individuals with high levels of resiliency are better equipped to cope with stress, manage uncertainty, and maintain a positive outlook amidst cultural differences and unfamiliar situations. Now, looking at curiosity, this involves a strong desire to explore, understand, and learn about new cultures, perspectives, and ways of thinking. Curious individuals actively seek out opportunities for cultural immersion, cross-cultural experiences, and intercultural exchange. They ask questions, listen attentively, and engage with diverse people and ideas, fostering mutual understanding and appreciation across cultural boundaries. Fearlessness and risk-taking propensities this is looking at the calculated risks, which are essential for embracing new challenges and seizing opportunities in global contexts. Individuals who are unafraid of failure, rejection, or ambiguity are more likely to step outside their comfort zones, experiment with innovative approaches, and pursue ambitious goals. They embrace uncertainty as a natural part of the global experience, viewing risks as opportunities for growth and learning. The fifth factor, quest for adventure. Now, a quest for adventure involves a passion for exploring new places, cultures, and experiences. Adventurous individuals are drawn to the excitement, the novelty, and the diversity of global environments, seeking out opportunities for personal and professional growth. They embrace the unknown with enthusiasm, embracing challenges as opportunities for exploration, discovery, and self-discovery. The sixth factor, desire and passion for learning about and being in other cultures. Now, these individuals have a genuine desire and passion for learning about other cultures and are more likely to approach cross-cultural interactions with respect, curiosity, and empathy. They actively seek out opportunities for cultural exchange, language learning, and intercultural immersion to deepen their understanding and appreciation of diverse perspectives and practices. Now, openness and ability to suspend judgment is broken down into the two topics here. Open-mindedness involves a willingness to suspend judgment, challenge assumptions, and embrace alternative viewpoints. Open individuals approach, approach cross-cultural interactions with humility, empathy, and a readiness to listen and learn from others. They recognize the value of diversity and actively seek out opportunities to broaden their perspectives, expand their horizons, and cultivate meaningful connections across cultural boundaries. The eighth factor, passion for cultural diversity. A passion for cultural diversity involves valuing and celebrating the richness, complexity, and beauty of cultural differences. Individuals with genuine appreciation for diversity are more likely to foster inclusive environments where people from different backgrounds feel valued, respected, and empowered to contribute their unique perspectives and talents. They recognize diversity as a source of strength, innovation, and creativity, driving collaboration and success in global context. Now, the ninth point here, adaptability, refers to the ability to adjust, flex, and thrive in changing environments. Global environments are characterized by cultural, social, and organizational diversity, requiring individuals to adapt their behaviors, communication styles, and problem-solving approaches to fit the context. 
adaptable individuals demonstrate flexibility, resilience, and resourcefulness in navigating cultural differences, managing complexity, and achieving goals in diverse global settings. The tenth factor, ability to connect with people from other parts of the world. Building meaningful relationships across cultural boundaries requires empathy, communication skills, and cultural intelligence. Individuals who can connect with people from diverse backgrounds demonstrate empathy, respect, and genuine interest in understanding and appreciating different perspectives and experiences. They bridge cultural divides, foster trust, and cultivate collaborative partnerships that drive innovation, creativity, and success in global endeavors. The last factor here, collaborative, Collaboration involves working effectively with others to achieve common goals, leveraging diverse talents, perspectives, and resources. In global context, collaboration is essential for building inclusive teams, fostering cross-cultural understanding, and driving collective impact. Collaborative individuals embrace teamwork, communication, and shared decision-making processes, which foster a culture of cooperation, trust and mutual support across cultural boundaries. Looking at the global mindset in terms of psychological capital as a whole, a global mindset encompasses, the psychological capital encompasses a set of attitudes, traits and behaviors that enable individuals to thrive in diverse, multicultural and complex global environments. By cultivating self-confidence, resiliency, curiosity, fearlessness, openness, adaptability, and a passion for cultural diversity, individuals can navigate cultural differences, build meaningful relationships, and drive collaborative success in today's interconnected world. Now, looking at selection procedures, these are critical for identifying and hiring the most suitable candidates for a position. They involve various steps and methods to assess candidates' qualifications, skills, and fit for the role in organization. Let's explore these, these topics a little bit further. Screen candidates. The initial screening process typically involves reviewing resumes, cover letters, and job applications to shortlist candidates who meet the basic qualifications and requirements. Screening may also involve preliminary assessments of candidates' skills, experience, and suitability for the position through online applications or automated screening tools. The second point, conduct multiple interviews. Multiple rounds of interviews are often conducted to evaluate candidates' qualifications, competencies, and cultural fit more comprehensively. Interviews may include phone screenings, video interviews, and face-to-face -face meetings with hiring managers, team members, and other stakeholders. Each interview round may focus on different aspects such as technical skills, behavioral competencies, and alignment with organizational values. The third point, test and examinations. So testing or an examination may be used to assess candidates' technical proficiency, cognitive abilities, problem-solving skills, or domain-specific knowledge. This may include written assessments, case studies, situational judgment tests, or technical proficiency exams relevant to the job role. Testing helps validate candidates' claims and provides objective measures of their capabilities. Soft skills are important in evaluating the candidates' soft skills, such as communication, teamwork, leadership, adaptability, and emotional intelligence, which are crucial for determining their potential for success in the role. Behavioral interviews and situational assessments are commonly used to gauge candidate soft skills by asking about past experiences and hypothetical scenarios. Assessments may also involve personality inventories or psychometric tests to measure traits like conscientiousness, agreeableness, and resilience. The fifth topic, interview with a group or panel. Panel interviews involve conducting interviews with multiple interviewers representing different stakeholders such as HR professionals, hiring managers, team members, and senior leaders. Panel interviews provide diverse perspectives on candidates' qualifications and fit for the role and organization. 
They also allow for more comprehensive evaluations and consensus building among interviewers. Checking references. This involves, obviously, reference checks involving contacts, the candidate's former employers, supervisors, colleagues, or other professional contacts to verify their qualifications, experience, and performance. Reference checks help validate candidates' credentials, assess their past behavior and performance, and gather insights from individuals who have worked closely with them. While reference checks can be valuable, they may also pose challenges, such as obta obtaining candidate feedback and candid feedback and verifying information due to legal and privacy considerations. Taking these selection procedures as a whole, effective selection procedures involve a combination of screening, interviewing, testing, and reference checking to assess candidates' qualifications, skills, and fit for the role and organization. By employing rigorous and comprehensive selection methods, organizations can identify top talent, minimize hiring risks, and build high-performing teams aligned with their goals and values. Now, virtual teams are comprised of members who collaborate remotely using technology and have become increasingly common in today's globalized and digitized workplace. Effective management of virtual teams requires careful attention to communication, collaboration, and relationship building. Let's look at these topics a little bit more in depth. So time zone notation, virtual teams often span multiple time zones, making it essential to establish a standardized time zone notation to coordinate meetings, deadlines, and work schedules. Using tools such as GMT or Greenwich Mean Time or UTC, Coordinated Universal Time, as reference points can help team members accurately interpret time differences and avoid confusion. Develop a trusting relationship. Building trust among virtual team members is crucial for fostering collaboration, accountability, and cohesion. Encouraging open communication, demonstrating reliability, and delivering on commitments are essential for establishing trust in virtual teams. Managers should actively facilitate team bonding activities, recognize contributions, and address conflicts promptly to maintain trust and morale. Now, open communication is important, and it's important to be clear and frequent, which is essential for virtual teams to stay aligned, informed, and engaged. Utilizing various communication channels such as video conferencing, instant messaging, email, and project management platforms helps facilitate real-time interactions and information sharing. Encouraging open dialogue, active listening, and feedback exchange fosters transparency, collaboration, and problem solving within virtual teams. The fourth point, establish guidelines. Establishing clear guidelines and expectations for virtual team communication, collaboration, and performance is essential for maintaining consistency and accountability. Guidelines may include protocols for responding to emails, scheduling meetings, sharing updates, and resolving conflicts. Documenting guidelines and sharing them with the team members ensures clarity and alignment with organizational objectives. The next point is to be clear. Clear and concise communication is critical in virtual teams to avoid misunderstandings and ensure alignment. Communicating objectives, expectations, deadlines, and roles explicitly helps clarify responsibilities and minimizes ambiguity. Using simple language, visual aids, and examples enhance comprehension and facilitates effective communication across diverse backgrounds and languages. The next point, invite only people who need to be there. Keeping virtual meetings focused and productive requires inviting only relevant stakeholders whose presence is necessary for decision-making or information sharing. Limiting meeting attendees to essential participants minimizes distractions, reduces meeting duration, and enhances engagement among participants. The next point is send an agenda before the meeting. Now, sending an agenda before virtual meetings helps set clear objectives, topics, and expectations for the discussion. Providing advance notice enables participants to prepare, contribute relevant insights, and stay focused during the meeting. 
After the meeting's completed, you can send a summary after the meeting. Sending a meeting summary or minutes after virtual meetings helps reinforce key takeaways, action items, and decisions made during the discussion. Summaries provide a reference point for follow-up actions, accountability, and alignment among team members who may have missed the meeting. Next, make information and content accessible. Ensuring accessibility to relevant information, documents, and resources is essential for collaboration and decision-making in virtual teams. Utilizing centralized platforms, cloud storage, or document repositories enables easy sharing, retrieval, and updating of information across distributed team members. Bringing this all together for virtual teams, effective management of virtual teams requires proactive communication clear expectations, and trust building among members. By implementing strategies such as standardized time zone notation, open communication channels, clear guidelines, and efficient meeting practices, organizations can enhance collaboration, productivity, and cohesion within virtual teams. Compensation policies play a crucial role in attracting, retaining, and motivating employees especially in the context of global assignments where individuals may need to leave their home country for work. Here's a detailed discussion on the bullet points listed on this slide. Incentive to leave home, country. Compensation policies should provide incentives for employees to leave their home country and take on international assignments. This may include offering higher salaries, bonuses, or other financial incentives to compensate for the challenges and disruptions associated with relocation. Maintain established standard of living. So compensation packages for international assignments should aim to maintain or improve the employee's standard of living compared to their home country. Adjustments for cost of living differences, housing allowances, and other benefits help ensure employees can afford similar lifestyles in their host country. Facilitate return to the home country. Compensation policies should include provisions to facilitate the smooth return of employees to their home country after completing their international assignment. This may involve offering repatriation allowances, assistance with job placement, or support with housing and relocation expenses upon return. Global managers paid three to five times more. Now, senior executives or global managers often receive higher compensation packages, typically ranging from three to five times more than their domestic counterparts. This premium reflects the increased responsibilities, complexities, and expectations associated with managing global operations and leading diverse teams. Salary based on responsibilities, comparable with domestic position. Salary structures for international assignments should be based on the responsibilities, skills, and qualifications required for the role. Salaries should be competitive and comparable with similar positions in the host country's market to attract and retain top talent. Benefits, usually 25 to 30% of salary. Benefits are essential components of compensation packages and typically account for 25 to 30% of the total salary. Common benefits may include health insurance, retirement plans, paid time off, and other perks designed to support employees' well-being and work-life balance. Non-salary allowances. Housing. Providing housing allowances or assistance with home sale, rental protection, and shipment storage of household goods helps employees secure suitable accommodation in the host country. Automobile coverage. Offering automobile allowances or assistance with selling, purchasing cars helps employees navigate transportation needs in the host country. Travel expenses. Covering travel expenses for relocation, home leave trips, and temporary living arrangements eases the financial burden of frequent travel between home and host countries. Relocation allowance. Providing a relocation allowance helps offset additional expenses associated with moving to a new country, such as visa fees, moving services, and settling in costs. Looking at compensations, 
As a whole, effective compensation policies for global assignments should strike a balance between providing competitive salaries, comprehensive benefits, and additional allowances to incentivize employees to leave their home country, maintain their standard of living, and facilitate a smooth transition back home. By aligning compensation packages with the needs and expectations of employees, organizations can attract and retain top talent, drive employee satisfaction, and achieve success in the global marketplace. This slide is taken from the textbook written by Hirsch, 2004, Small Business Solutions, How to Prevent and Fix the 13 Biggest Problems that Derail Businesses. Now, compensation options encompass various forms of economic rewards provided to employees in exchange for their work and contributions to the organization. These rewards go beyond just base salary and can include various monetary and non-monetary benefits. Here's a detailed discussion on compensation options focusing on economic rewards. The first being base salary. So base salary is the fixed amount of money paid to an employee for performing their job responsibilities. It serves as the foundation of an employee's compensation package and is typically determined based on factors such as job role, experience, education, and market rates. The second being performance-based pay. Performance-based pay ties compensation directly to an employee's performance, productivity, and achievement of specific goals and targets. Examples include bonuses, commissions, profit sharing, and stock options where employees receive additional compensation based on the, their individual or team performance. Bonuses are one-time or periodic payments awarded to employees for exceptional performance, meeting targets, or contributing to the organization's success. They can be discretionary bonuses, performance bonuses, or incentive bonuses linked to specific outcomes or milestones. Fourth component is commissions. Now, commissions are monetary incentives paid to sales employees based on the volume or value of sales they generate. Sales commissions are typically calculated as a percentage of the sales revenue or profit generated by the employee and may vary based on performance tiers or targets. We also have something called profit sharing and profit sharing programs distribute a portion of the company's profits to employees as a form of incentive compensation. Employees receive a share of the company's profits based on predetermined formulas or allocations, providing them with a stake in the organization's financial performance. We also have stock options and equity grants, which offer employees the opportunity to purchase or receive company stock at a predetermined price or as part of their compensation package. They provide employees with ownership stakes in the company, aligning their interests with shareholders and incentivizing them to contribute to long-term growth and success. Benefits are non-monetary forms of compensation provided to employees to enhance their overall well-being and work-life balance. Examples include health insurance, retirement plans, paid time off, parental leave, tuition reimbursement, and wellness programs. We also have perks and allowances, which are additional economic rewards provided to employees to enhance their work experience and quality of life. Examples include transportation allowances, housing allowances, meal allowances, mobile phone plans, and reimbursement for professional development or certification fees. This brings us to salary reviews and increases. Periodic salary reviews and increases are conducted to ensure that employees' compensation remains competitive and aligned with their contributions, market rates, and cost of living adjustments. Salary increases may be based on factors such as performance evaluations, tenure, promotions, or changes in job responsibilities. So compensation options encompass a wide range of economic rewards designed to attract, retain, and motivate employees. By offering competitive based salaries, performance based incentives, benefits, perks and opportunities for growth and development, organizations can create a comprehensive compensation package that meets the diverse needs and preferences of their workforce while driving engagement, productivity and organizational success. Now, transitioning to non-economic rewards, 
These are intangible incentives provided to employees to recognize and reinforce desired behaviors, contributions, and achievements. These rewards go beyond monetary compensation and play a crucial role in fostering employee motivation, engagement, and satisfaction. Here's a detailed discussion on compensation options focusing on non-economic rewards. The first being recognition and appreciation. Recognition programs acknowledge and appreciate employees for their efforts, accomplishments, and contributions to the organization. This can take the form of verbal praise, written commendations, public recognition at meetings or events, or inclusion in company newsletters or award ceremonies. Recognizing employees' hard work and achievements boosts morale, reinforces positive behaviors, and fosters a culture of appreciation and gratitude. Second, employee development opportunities. Providing opportunities for learning, growth, and skill development is a valuable non-economic reward. This includes access to training programs, workshops, conferences, mentorship opportunities, and educational resources to enhance employees' professional and personal development. Investing in employee development demonstrates a commitment to their long-term success and career advancement, increasing loyalty and engagement. The third point, career advancement and opportunities. Offering opportunities for career advancement, promotion, and challenging assignments is a non-economic reward that motivates employees to excel and grow within the organization. Providing clear pathways for career progression, mentorship programs, and succession planning helps employees see a future with the company and fosters a sense of purpose and commitment. Flexible work arrangements, Flexible work arrangements such as telecommuting, flexible hours, compressed work weeks, or job sharing are non-economic rewards that enhance work-life balance and employee satisfaction. Allowing employees to balance work commitments with personal responsibilities promotes well-being, reduces stress, and increases loyalty and productivity. The fifth topic, autonomy and empowerment. Granting employees autonomy, decision-making authority, and ownership over their work is a powerful non-economic reward. Empowering employees to make decisions, take initiative, and innovate fosters a sense of trust, responsibility, and engagement. Providing opportunities for autonomy encourages creativity, problem-solving, and accountability, leading to higher job satisfaction and performance. The sixth point, workplace flexibility, Creating a supportive and inclusive work environment that values diversity, equity, and inclusion is a non-economic reward in itself. Offering benefits such as parental leave, childcare assistance, elder care support, and accommodations for disabilities demonstrates a commitment to employees' well-being and inclusion. Cultivating a culture of respect, fairness, and belonging enhances employee morale, loyalty, and organizational cohesion. The seventh point, work-life balance initiatives. Implementing initiatives to promote work-life balance, such as wellness programs, mindfulness sessions, on-site fitness facilities, or stress management workshops is a non-economic reward that enhances employee health and well-being. Supporting employees in achieving work-life balance reduces burnout, absenteeism, and turnover, while increasing productivity, morale, and job satisfaction. The eighth point, team building and social events. Organizing team building activities, social events, and community service initiatives fosters camaraderie, collaboration, and a sense of belonging among employees. Providing opportunities for social interaction, networking, and bonding strengths relationships enhances teamwork and boosts morale. So looking at non-economic rewards, these play a vital role in motivating, engaging, and retaining employees by recognizing their contributions, supporting their development, and enhancing their overall well-being and satisfaction. By offering a combination of tangible and intangible incentives, organizations create a positive work environment that fosters employee loyalty, productivity, and success. Thank you for hanging out with me today and thank you and hopefully this has been helpful in terms of global human resource management. If you did like this video, if you did like this presentation, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell and stay tuned for more information coming your way.
Take care. Have a great day.